get your start? Um, how do I get my start? Well, working in public theater in Pittsburgh, and then finally. Actually, yeah, I mean, good, good, good point because. Um, when I got back from the war in Vietnam, I was stationed in uh, North Carolina, and there were theaters there, live theaters, and I became the makeup director at those theaters. So I was doing makeup on everybody in the cast and myself, and then playing a part or dancing or choreographing, you know. So, uh, but I, that, I, I was able to put a portfolio together of all those theater makeups. Me as Ben Franklin, you know, it's elaborate stuff. So I was in a bar, I, was, I delivered signs to a bar uh, down there, and uh, there was an interesting guy sitting there, leather jacket, he looked like Indiana Jones. His name was Forrest Carpenter, and he had just finished being the art director on Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, a horror movie in Florida. And he was about to start another horror movie called Death Dream. So I was in the right place at the right time. I went to my car, got my portfolio, put it in front of his face. Two days later, I was on that movie Death Dream because of the portfolio. You know, what if I didn't have it that day? You know, I tell my students to not go anywhere without their portfolio on your phone, because you always have your phone. Yes, young man. Um, in, creep, in the first Creep Show, um, what's it like working with roaches? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, because I was never in the same room with those damn roaches. <laughs> <laughs> when I did the effect of them coming out of E.G. Marshall, it was a sealed room, and I'm looking through a window, you know. <laughs> cue the blood, <laughs> cue the roaches, and they shot it, and I was never... One accidentally, I was testing E.G. Marshall's head and a roach came up and touched my hand. And I sadly was on the other side of the bathroom. <laughs> I don't remember getting there. You know. Yeah, I hate, I hate bugs. That's part of what it was like. <laughs> yeah. uh, huge fan. Um, you look like me. I get all the time at horror conventions that uh, people walk up to me and ask for your autograph. <laughs> I, you're my doppelganger. But I, I say, I, huge fan. I, Singly hold Will you, you come to my table when this is over? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to get a picture of you with my banner. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and meet my uh, my manservant over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I single I singularly hold you and George Romero completely responsible for my track from a kid into horror movies and zombie movies. But I have a question. Um, huge Walking Dead fan, and I won't ask you about that. Um, I'm a huge Walking Dead fan, but. Of all the history of you and Romero starting, basically what we now know as the zombie genre in our generation, um, why now? Why is it so over the top successfully now versus the whole track from way back with Night of the Living Dead and so on? If I knew that, I would be violating the rule of Hollywood, and that is that nobody knows anything. <laughs> nobody knows what's going to make it or what's the next trend. It's all a huge surprise when it happens. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad it's happening, you know. um, but nobody knows that answer. Good question, though. <laughs> like, yeah. I know it's like asking your parents to choose their favorite kid, but um, oh, thanks. Um, but what one effect or creature design or makeup job would you say that you're most proud of in your career? Well, that is like asking me to pick a favorite <laughs> child, <laughs> because Fluffy, you know, I love doing Fluffy and Creep Show. Uh, but then the grandpa makeup in Texas Chainsaw or Lizzie from Tales from the Dark Side, they're all my children, so. But who was the most fun of those creatures? Uh, probably Fluffy, because, you know, I'll be lying in bed. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I hear some kids outside in the summertime. I'll grab my mechanical Fluffy head that the eyes move. And, oh, and I'm in my underwear and I'm climbing the fence to walk toward the front of the house to make Fluffy you know, appear and watch them run into each other and <laughs> scream. So I love to scare people. And so fl probably Fluffy was more, most fun, yeah. I saw that when I was probably way too young to see it. So Creep show, yeah. Yes. Hi, Mary. Good job. <laughs> That's what I do. That's why I'm here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, go right here. Okay, quick question. Has there ever been a time when you've been by yourself in your studio when you're working on a particular project slash creature that you've actually kind of creeped yourself out? Creep myself out? By your work being so good. No, uh, no, I, uh, when I go to see the, my films, I don't watch the film. I pick somebody out in the audience and watch them <laughs> watching the film. That's the reward, because you know, there's no applause, there's no shooting gallery when you're shooting, you know, applauding you after each take. Although that's not true, the crew, Casting crew 
when the when the guy bit the chunk out of the girl's neck in Dawn of the Dead on set, but the crew applauded that one. So, because that was the first thing we did, you know. So that was like, what was that? What this is going to be like, you know? And it got worse, of course, as you know. Dawn of the Dead. I thought I saw him. No. Yeah, right there. The shotgun blast on May, well, we, sh we did that in New York. We stole that shot, we weren't allowed to do that. You can't fire a gun in New York, it's the Sullivan Law. It's five years mandatory sentence <laughs> in prison. So there's uh, um, five cameras around my head, and my head is stuffed with uh, oh, shrimp dip and apples, and uh, condoms filled with blood. Anything we could find on the food table went in my head. <laughs> and I fired both barrels at the same time through the windshield of the car, you know. Um, and like I said, we weren't allowed to be there. So after I did it, and it almost it threw me off the car, a stunt guy grabbed me. Um, they grabbed the gun and put that in the car and drove that away. And then they're forcing me to get into a car. But I said, no, no, I had to go back. I wanted to see what happened to my head, you know, so. But then they drove me away. In like 60 seconds, there was nobody there. So we stole that shot. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> yes, oh, I thought, oh, you're just wiping your head, okay. All right, Tom. Do you have a question? I have a question, Tom. Uh, when you were... Oh, it's you, I was looking at you. I know, right? <laughs> I thought you were talking Then I saw your lip cord moving, and it's like, okay. <laughs> no, because the sound is coming out of the same speaker. Yeah. That's gotcha. it. So, when you were in Vietnam, you talked about that a little bit. When I was what? When you were in Vietnam, yeah. uh, how did that affect uh, the authenticity of some of your work later on? Well, I'm the only makeup artist that has seen the real thing. That's what I said on the, when I was the judge on Face Off, you know. I'm the only makeup artist that has seen dead bodies, and that's why it pisses me off so often. When I see a movie where someone's supposed to be dead, an actor, you know, and they're lying there and they're trying to look pretty for the camera, you know. Every, every corpse I saw, the jaw is slack. These muscles don't work anymore. Just like your arm, nothing works. So these muscles don't work. The jaw is slack. And nobody does that. No actor knows how to play dead in a movie by when they're lying there. You know, the jaw has got to be slack. Or it takes me right out of the movie and I know that it's, you know, it's an actor. Um, Danny Trejo can act dead real well. <laughs> I saw him and he, he how many times do you think he had to pretend to be dead? Because, you know, uh, his resume said 11 years San Quentin Drama Club. So, you know, and the tattoo on his chest was begun in San Quentin, but the guy doing it was transferred to Folsom Prison. So Danny had to wait till he was transferred to Folsom Prison for the guy to finish the tattoo. But, you know, we're chain gangs? What do you think? Do you, uh, anyway, he's the exception. He's the only actor that knows how to play dead. But wait, what was your question? I went off on a tangent. Uh, yeah, you answered it. Uh, just how you know how your how your service and then see. Okay, yeah, because I yeah I saw the real thing, and when I looked at it, I always wondered how would I create that. You know, that's why all my stuff was anatomically correct because I saw the real stuff. You know, um, and it has to it has to give me the same feeling. The fake stuff has to give me the same feeling I got when I saw the real stuff, or the fake stuff isn't real enough, and so I strive for that. And it, you know, paid off. It's, uh, yeah. I'm the king of splatter. So they've said, yeah. So one of the early films that you did... Okay, now you're I was looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> As if he was still talking to me. Uh, one of the earlier films you uh, did with Romero was Martin. Yeah. Talk about filming that, because uh, talking to George and also talking to John Amplis, who was the star, it was very low budget. Everybody was doing all different kind of jobs. Just talk about what it was like working on that set. Well, I, not only did I do the makeup effects, but I played a part and I did the stunts because they, you know, they didn't have their act together like the stunt man. I said, well, I can do that. Throw that, drive that car at me. <laughs> and I went through the windshield and flipped over, you know, so. Um, but no, that was fun. That was like a, like a summer shoot. Um, the only effect was the stake going in Martin's chest because he wore those dumb, you know, plastic fangs on purpose. Um, and then I think I poured blood in a bathtub. Uh, we shot. We shot in uh, uh, the uh, one of the producer's uh, grandmother's house, and you know she would go to the bathroom like at midnight, and the sink would be full of blood. She doesn't know what's going on. You know, so. That's just part of the stuff I remember from Martin. 